Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. You cannot overcome evil any other way. The only way to get the devil back for what he has done to you, all the unjust things, is to get out of your house every day and be as good as you can possibly be to as many people as you can possibly be good to. It's living with this aggressive, unselfish attitude and actually living like you're not and I'm not the most important thing in the universe. <laughs> All right, here's a scripture you're not going to care for much, but nonetheless it's in here, so we might as well read it. <laughs> and Jesus called to him the throng with his disciples and said to them, if anyone intends to come after me, let him deny himself, forget, ignore, disown, and lose sight of himself and all of his own interests. Let him take up his cross and follow me. Now, you know, you can read that and think, well, this Christianity thing don't sound like too much fun to me. <laughs> totally forget about yourself, lose sight of yourself, lose sight of all your own interests. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But we don't want to take this out of context. First of all, it's very dangerous to just pull one scripture out of anywhere without looking at what's around it. And Jesus was speaking to a specific situation, although the general principle of this is absolutely true. It would be taking it too far to say that God didn't want you to take care of yourself, that he never wanted you to do anything for yourself, that your whole life is supposed to be just giving out, giving out, giving out, giving out, giving out, and it's wrong to ever want anything for yourself. Obviously, we're going to have desires. The Bible says if you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. So there are things that we want. There's things that we need. If you're giving out all the time and nobody's ever doing anything back for you or you're not ever taking the time to do anything for yourself, you're just going to get burnt out and it's not going to take very long. We need to have something coming in and something going out, something coming in and something going out all the time. Even the very act of breathing shows us a very important principle. We take in and we let out. We take in and we let out. Now, if I just do either one exclusive of the other one, I'm going to faint. If I just... <laughs> Or if I were just to let out. And I think we've got a lot of fainting saints. <laughs> Sitting in church pews every Sunday morning. Because all they do is take in, take in, take in, take in. Well, I'm going to go to church and get my blessing. I sure hope that pastor's got a word for me today. I tell you, God, if I don't get a breakthrough, I just don't think I can hang on much longer. <laughs> Now, I know none of you said that today. And the best way in the world to get your problem solved is to do something for somebody else. What you make happen for somebody else, God will make happen for you. You can't reap a harvest without sowing a seed. Tell God what your need is, but then get yourself somewhere where you can be a blessing to somebody else and do it on purpose. Don't have to have three prophecies, two angels, and 12 confirmations. Just say, God, we're going to have a new plan. You are no longer going to have to make me bless people. I am going to bless people unless you tell me not to. How about a new deal? I'm going to bless people unless you tell me not to. Now, I will wait on God, you know, for a few minutes to make sure I got peace about doing something. But I don't have prayer meetings anymore over whether or not I'm supposed to bless somebody. I got lots of stuff to pray about, but I don't need to pray about whether or not it's okay to bless somebody. And the only reason why we do that is because we want to keep our stuff. <laughs> so Jesus was speaking to a specific situation here with Peter, where he'd been sharing with Peter that the time was coming very close for him to die. He was going to go to the cross. He was going to suffer. And Peter rebuked Jesus and said, oh, no, Lord, this must not ever happen to you. 
And Jesus turned and said, get thee behind me, Satan. You're an offense and in my way. You're not caring about the will of God, but only what pleases you. Now, the whole reason why Peter said that to Jesus, to be very honest, he wasn't concerned about Jesus. He figured if Jesus was going to suffer and he was his buddy, he'd suffer too. So it was a whole selfish thing. And then Jesus said, anybody who's going to be my disciple, who's going to follow me, you got to take up your cross and do it. Forget yourself, lose sight of yourself and all your own interests. So he was making a point with Peter that you can't be my disciple and just care more about what you want than you do the will of God. Good. Amen? Good. But then there's other sides to this also. And it, it's very important to me that I teach balance. I mean, I can stand here and say, forget yourself, lose sight of yourself, all your own interests. And it, it sounds holy and spiritual, but... It's just going to be about two weeks and it'll wear you out. We have needs. And God doesn't expect us not to have those needs met. Don't be one of those kind of people who always says, oh, I can do without. Oh, I can do without. Oh, I can do without. No, you can't. <laughs> you might, but you know what? You'll end up being a martyr. Well, I just do everything around here. I do all the work. I do all the serving. You know, I do all the giving. Nobody does anything for me. <laughs> no? Okay, I'll go on to something else. <laughs> Let, let's think about the other side of this. Let's look at Mark 14. See, how can I in one message tell you not to be selfish and give you permission to bless yourself at the same time? Because that's really the, the amazement of the Word of God. There's such fine balance in it that every need is met if we'll just follow the leadership and the promptings of the Holy Spirit. See, that, that's the beauty of the new covenant. We don't have enough laws and guidelines to cover all this, but we have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us that can prompt us when we need to give and when we need to maybe take a break for a while and Take a vacation and do something for ourselves. Then we get energized again to come back and serve people all over again and do and do and do. You're okay. Are we at a new gate or something? You know, it's like, hey, when I leave here, I got a plan for my flesh. You say, what kind of a preacher are you? An honest one. <laughs> you know why? Because tomorrow morning I go back to working on my book and then I'll work on my book all week and then Friday night I'm doing a women's conference somewhere and so, you know, I'm going to take a little bit of time in there whether it's a couple hours in the afternoon I'm going to probably go get a pedicure or, you know, I might, you know, who knows what I might do but I'm going to not only just give out I'm also going to take in a little bit because if you keep just giving out and never taking in pretty soon you're not going to have anything to give out Amen? And I think that, that as people, we have a tendency to live in the ditch on one side or the other. We're either going to just be totally selfish and self-centered, or we get a revelation on serving and, you know, being a blessing, and now we start feeling guilty if we do anything for ourselves because there's all these needy people out there. So we swing all the way to this side, then pretty soon we're bitter and we got burnout. <laughs> And then, you know, people are serving in the church and they go overboard. And so then all of a sudden now they're not ever going to do anything in church again because you know how they are. They just take advantage of it. If you offer to do anything, they call you every time you turn around. Well, say no. <laughs> say, I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I'm happy to do it, but I got to have a little life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, like I said, I've done it wrong every way you can do it wrong. And I think, I'm at a, I think I'm at the best place of balance in my life that I've ever been. I work hard, but I'm not killing myself anymore. 
I do lots of things for other people, but you know what? I've decided that you don't have to have your emergency on my one day off. <laughs> You've been in emergency mode for 40 years. Why would I have to fix it on my one day off? Now, on the other hand, if it's a genuine thing and God prompts me, then I'll lay aside whatever I'm going to do and go take care of it. Is anybody awake out there? You know what I found out? If I've been trying to help you four years and you're not helped, it ain't my fault. You don't want to be helped. So there's a difference in helping people and then letting the devil use some people to just suck everything out of you that you got. Now, so you, you like to get something for yourself part better than the... <laughs> so we're going to mix this message up good so I can tell you to die to self and then get something for yourself and then die to self and get something for yourself and then I'll get a few claps in between all the moans. <laughs> we're going to call this the ouch hallelujah message. <laughs> I'll say one thing, you're going, ouch, and then, ooh, hallelujah. Uh, if you behave yourself, I might tell you my joke before I'm over. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Mark 14, 3. And while he was in Bethany, a guest in the house of Simon the leper. It was interesting who Jesus visited, wasn't it? And he was reclining at table. A woman came in with an alabaster jar of sweet perfume. Very costly. Very precious. And she broke it and poured the perfume all over his head. Now there were some there who were moved with indignation and said to themselves, to what purpose was this perfume wasted? For we could have sold that for more than 300 denarii, a laboring man's wages for a year. That bottle of perfume was worth a year's wages. <laughs> and the money could have been given to the poor. Now that sounds spiritual. That sounds holy. Well, Jesus... I mean, you're always teaching us all these great principles. You're the one that's teaching us to live unselfish lives, to give and give and give. And so why did you, why do you seem to be happy about this woman wasting a year's wages just pouring this stuff all over you when that could have been sold <laughs> and given to the poor? There's a good message here. And Jesus goes on to say, Verse 6, but Jesus said, let her alone. Why are you troubling her? She has done a good and a beautiful thing to me, a praiseworthy and a noble deed. For you will always have the poor with you, and whatever, whenever you wish, you can do good to them, but you're not always going to have me. She has done what she could. She came beforehand to anoint my body for the burial. Now, here's what was going on here. Jesus was getting ready to go through the absolute worst agony that we could ever possibly imagine. He didn't, he didn't even fully understand in his humanity what he was getting ready to go through. And God sent somebody to do something so outrageous for him that it would encourage him. She poured her love and appreciation out for what he was doing for her by giving costly and the most expensive thing that she had. Well, people looking on said, what a waste. But you know what Jesus was saying? In this instance, I'm worthy of waste. Good, good. Good. Wow. And can I tell you that there are times in your life when you are worthy of waste. And God will do some extravagant things for you if you'll let him. But there's no point in him doing that if you're only going to just be the kind of person who takes in, takes in, takes in, takes in, takes in, and you never let anything back out that God has done for you. There are two seas in Palestine. The Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea. Very interesting. Are you ready? The Sea of Galilee, water flows in and water flows out. The Dead Sea only takes. Water comes in, but it has no outlet. 
You want to be like a Dead Sea? <laughs> the Bible says that a selfish person is dead even while they still live. I was a believer, but I was like the walking dead. I went to church every Sunday, but I was still like the walking dead. I had my bumper sticker, I read my Bible, but I was still like the walking dead because everything was about me. You think you can't be saved and be selfish? That's what's wrong. That's why our Christian witness is not saying much to the world because we've got a lot of Christians that still don't understand this. You know what, I have, I have a big job teaching the Word, and I'm grateful for what God has given me to do. But you know, the more important part of my life is not this time up here. It's what I do in my private life behind closed doors. And how tragic it would be if I was preaching this and not living it. How tragic would that be? Jesus died so we could be free from ourselves. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 5.15, I love this scripture. This is one of my very favorite scriptures of all time. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. And he died for all, so that all those who live might live no longer to and for themselves, but to and for him who died and was raised again for their sake. So Jesus didn't just die for us so we could go to heaven. He didn't just die for us so we could have our sins forgiven. Of course, those are the more important things. But he said, I want you to enjoy your life. So here's a flash. Another big reason why I died for you was so you wouldn't have to live a selfish, self-centered life. I have empowered you to be a blessing, even going so far as to make you a blessing to your enemies. See, my ministry is not over when I leave this pulpit today. It's basically just getting started. I have no idea what I'm going to run into yet today. But I've already set my mind that I don't want to miss any opportunity to be a blessing to anybody. The Bible says in Galatians 6.10, be mindful to be a blessing. Be mindful. Have your mind full of ways that you can be a blessing, especially to those of the household of faith. I've committed myself even more so this year, and I want to encourage you today to pay a lot more attention to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Let's look at Romans 7, 6. If you want to know the truth, if I could, I can't because of filming for TV, I would preach this message or some version of it everywhere that I went. Because as far as I'm concerned, this is pretty much the most important thing that we need to pay attention to. What are the most important commandments, Jesus? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. And you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. By these shall all men know. By this shall all men know. By this shall all men know. Okay, Romans 7, 6. But now we are discharged from the law, and we've terminated all intercourse with it, having died to what once restrained and held us captive. So now we serve not under obedience to the old code of written regulations, but under obedience to the promptings of the Spirit in newness of life. So if we will be committed, and we'll just talk about this area, but the promptings of the Spirit. You're getting ready to say something, you get a prompting from God. You don't say that. Oh, okay. I mean, God tries to prompt us all day long. You know, I've got a clock over there that tells me that I'm supposed to quit in six minutes. Now, they've put that there to prompt me to do the right thing. And God has put the Holy Spirit in us to prompt us to do the right thing. We don't have to. I don't have to give the employee at work that's been mean to me a ride. I'm not going to lose my salvation if I don't. I don't have to. 
But if the Holy Spirit is prompting me to, see, this is the freedom of the new covenant. I don't have a law that says do this or God's mad at you. Do this or you lose your salvation. Do this or you're not going to go to heaven. But I now live by a higher law, which if I obey it, will produce in me a newness of life, an enthusiasm, a freshness, an excitement that nothing else can make up for. Promptings. Practical example. I pray every day, Lord, I want to be a blessing to people. Help me walk in love. Okay. Now, it needs to be more than just a prayer. I don't know if you figured it out or not, but we like to sound holy in our prayers. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, no time for that. Now I'm down to five minutes. <laughs> Went to a a place of business the other day, I, we happened to know the couple, they were, provide a service and I'd gone there for something and just in conversation, they weren't hinting, just said, you know, we're both at a place where we really need to buy pretty much all new clothes. It's just been a long, long time since we've bought ourselves any clothes and I, I've known, you know, I know that they've been tight on money and we've, we've helped them a few different times and so, I mean, it, it, it just took a second. I didn't need a prayer meeting. I didn't need a confirmation. I didn't need, you know, I just, just the prompting in my spirit, that's something you could do. Just, just take them out and buy them new clothes. Well, I, I waited just about five minutes just to, you know, just to sit on it and make sure that I had peace. And, you know, when we offered to do that, it made them so happy. You would have thought that you gave them a gazillion dollars. Now listen, I'm not telling you that so you think I'm good. That's got nothing to do with this. I'm just, I'm just trying to show you all the little things. And then we said, and we'll take you. We'll go with you. I'll work with you. Dave will work with the guy. Well, that meant more to them. The time did even than anything else. Because they're not like, they don't, they're not real up on fashion. That's not really their thing. And you know, <laughs> I'm cool with that. I'm, I'm down with that. <laughs> you want to know what to put on and what looks good? Call me. Okay. Come on, are you out there today? Yeah. All right. Let me close with a story and an altar call. If you've heard me preach much at all, you've heard this story, but it'll be good for you to hear it again. A little boy about 10 years old was standing in front of a shoe store on the roadway, and he was barefooted, looking through the window and shivering because he was so cold. Barefoot, and it was cold. A woman walked up to the little boy and said, little fellow, why are you looking so earnestly in that window? And he said, well, ma'am, I was asking God to give me a pair of shoes. The lady asked God for a confirmation and for a prophecy and for an angel appearance while she was considering buying the boy a pair of shoes. The lady took the little boy by the hand, went into the store. <laughs> Some stuff you don't got to pray about. Come on. She took the boy by the hand, went into the store, asked the clerk if she could have a dozen pair of socks and a basin of water and a towel. He quickly brought them to her and she took the little fella to the back part of the store. I love that part because she didn't stay out front where she could be admired and embarrass him. She went to the back part of the store so she could do something privately to bless somebody else. She took the little fellow to the back part of the store, took her gloves off, knelt down, washed his little feet, and dried them. By this time, the clerk had returned with the socks. She put a pair of socks on his feet brought, uh, and then bought him a new pair of shoes. She tied up the remaining pair of socks and gave them to the little boy, and she said, Now, I'm sure you feel a lot more comfortable. The astonished little boy took her by the hand, looked up into her face with tears streaming down his face. He said, Ma'am, are you God's wife? Well, today we've been talking about overcoming a selfish attitude. And I don't think any one of us would say, well, you know, I just want to be selfish, so I'm going to be selfish. We don't want to be selfish, but we will be unless we become aggressively generous. And so I'm going to give you an opportunity today. The Bible actually says in Proverbs 11:25, the liberal person, which would be another way of saying the generous person, shall be enriched 
and he who waters others shall himself be watered. So it's really saying that you're gonna reap what you sow. And so I hope that you enjoy the TV program. We've been on television now for over 20 years providing the Word of God on a regular basis. And I hope and pray that it's making a real difference in your life. And today I'm gonna ask you to give a special offering just to help us keep the television programs on the air and reach out to new people. You know, television airtime is very expensive, but it won't be a burden for anybody, especially for us, if everybody does their part in making sure that it gets paid for without strain. So I'm asking you to give today to help us with the airtime for the programs, and I believe that when you do, you're actually even gonna get more out of the programs because what you invest in tends to bring back a greater harvest in your life. But I know that I know that I know that the Word of God is true and that He changes lives and He gives you a life worth living. Misschien ken je Joyce Meyer van haar boeken of van haar programma Enjoying Everyday Life. Maar wist je dat Joyce Meyer Ministries ook overal ter wereld concrete humanitaire hulp biedt door middel van voedselverstrekking, ziekenhuizen, noodhulp bij rampen, het bevrijden van slachtoffers van mensenhandel en nog veel meer? Deze christelijke hulporganisatie heet Hand of Hope en draait volledig op giften. Early on, mom and dad, you know, really just started to realize just how full the Bible is with uh, mandates that we're supposed to take care of the poor. You know, it talks all the time about visiting those that are in prison and feeding the hungry and you know taking in the stranger and, and taking care of the widow and the orphan. And so we strive to do that. And as the ministry has grown, our, our ability to influence and do bigger things has also grown. You know, it's really great to have the ability to feed children all around the world. And I have a goal and a desire to keep feeding more and more all the time. This after-school feeding program serves an average of 90 to 100,000 hot meals per One year. One meal for these kids is, is survival. Well, I'm here in Thailand at one of our children's homes. You can feed, house, and educate a child. Hope Cambodia has been absolutely amazing. We've opened 15 different orphanages. And we're so grateful to be able to build this well here in Sri Lanka. We love to get clean drinking water to people. So the water they're drinking is not making their children sick, and it's, it's not dirty, contaminated water. <laughs> definitely feel in Haiti just the absolute desperation. I'm at the Cure Hospital in Malawi, Africa. A huge line of people who are waiting to see our nurses and our doctors. Many doctors and medical people have volunteered their time. We are in Summers Point, New Jersey. Well, today we're, we're in Joplin, Missouri. We're here in Haiti in the village, and we're about to move people into brand new houses we've built. The winds were so constant with these big, big gusts. It was terrifying. 150 or more were killed. Thousands left homeless. Hey, you there, guys? Those gifts from Joyce Five Ministries. Here in Zimbabwe, I was able to hand out the two millionth bag in a prison. That you can't have a different life today. Don't know how many, you know, lives you guys save by coming in and showing the love that you guys show. Human trafficking, today's term for modern slavery. We've been working in different parts of the world and providing a, a place for women to come out of that lifestyle and be restored. It, it, there's no limit here. This is, this is ran by God. He changes lives in Project Hope. You can change, you can get healing, you can survive. Over Jezus vertellen en mensen laten zien dat God van ze houdt. Ja, de vele noden op de wereld gaan de mens te boven. En misschien vraag je je zelfs af of je er überhaupt wel iets aan kunt doen. Maar dat kan dus wel degelijk. Hand of Hope, de christelijke hulporganisatie van Joyce Meyer Ministries, is daar het bewijs van. Alles in één keer oplossen gaat niet. Maar wij bieden mensen één voor één de helpende hand. En 
so I'm inviting you to join us in partnership. Help us glorify God and share Christ. Help us help hurting people. Help us feed the poor and get the gospel to people that don't yet know what we know. You can check us out on JoyceMeyer.org and find out all that you need to know about partnership or you can call the ministry. God bless you and thank you for praying about this. Elk gebed en elke donatie telt. Samen veranderen we de wereld.